Hey, Forward Church. Do you remember when uh, we started into this new normal about seven weeks back? And I think a lot of us at that point thought, okay, two weeks from now, uh, we'll start to get back to a semblance of normal. And, and then we quickly learned in that first week, wow, this is probably going to be longer and more drawn out than we thought. And, and for many of us, I think we started to learn to live and die by the daily news conferences. As new news came out, as uh, new timelines were given, and we got into this rhythm and routine of just having our expectations constantly kind of broken and disappointed. And, and now I think we've got into this season where we just don't even have expectations anymore. And some of us have gotten into a place where we've kind of started to lose hope. Maybe you've lost hope because you just don't know when you're going to be able to start working again. And you don't know when the kids are going to be able to go back to school again. Or you don't know when those vacation plans that you've put off or that retirement that you're planning. All those things, they've just kind of been put on hold. And, and we can start to longingly look back to what was and just think, man, things will never be that way again. And there's some truth to that reality that things will never be that way again. But when we only look at our present and our past, we set ourselves up in a dangerous place where hope quickly fades. And it's a place where we shouldn't be as Christians. So I just wanna share with you a few verses uh, in this video that I hope will bring you encouragement and restore hope to you if you feel like you've kind of lost hope. In 2 Corinthians 4, uh, 16 to 18, Paul writes these words as someone who is well acquainted with suffering and with disappointment. And he writes and he says, so we do not lose heart. And the question should be for us, well, well Paul, how do you not lose heart in the midst of grieving all the things that you've lost and all the expectations that have been dashed and in the midst of suffering, how do you go forward, Paul? And he says, listen, it's not that our circumstances change. He says, though our outward self is wasting away. Yeah, life is hard and life is difficult, but he says our inner self is being renewed day by day. That is that although we're suffering through circumstances that are tough, that are wearing us down in some ways, there's this inner strength that we draw. Now, where does that strength come from? He says, for this momentary affliction is preparing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison. And he says, I could get caught up in looking at this momentary affliction and I could start to think and allow my mind to go to a place where I just think this is the way things are always going to be. And that's, I think, where some of us have started to get, especially in the sameness of each day feeling like the last. We start to fall into a space where we think this is the is this the way things are always going to be? Uh, man, I wish I could go back. I don't want to stay in this spot. But he says, no, no, that's not where we fall because we know that this is a story that's not cyclical, but it has a beginning where God created everything good and beautiful. It has this current reality where, yeah, things are not as God intended them to be, but because of what Jesus Christ has accomplished for us, if we put our trust in that, there's also a hope of what is yet to come. That is what he says when he says there's this eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison, that no matter what I'm going through right now, no matter how difficult it is right now, no matter how hard it is, no matter how long it feels like this has been going on for, I don't have to lose hope because there is a future that is going to come. It is assured, it is, uh, it is set in stone, and it is beyond comparison. I can't even come to a point where I can compare it to the, gl to the glory of anything that's here on earth. The glory of it so surpasses that. He says, as we look not to the things that are seen, but to the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen, they're transient. And so these things will fade. They will pass. And I promise you, it will happen faster than you think, even here on this earth, that things will change and things will pass and, and we will enter into 
new rhythms and new routines and many things will return to some semblancy of normal, but that's not where we need to have our focus even when those things begin to happen because that's not where our hope lies. He says, the things that are seen are transient, but the things that are unseen are eternal. And we don't look at the things that are seen, but the things that are unseen. And, and so let me just encourage you, if you are a follower of Jesus, and some of the things that are seen right now are dragging you down, and the circumstances that you're in just seem to be weighing on you, let me just encourage you, do not lose heart because we don't look at the things that are seen. We look at the things that are unseen. The things that are unseen are eternal. And there is uh, waiting for you uh, <laughs> thousands of years in the future, if you can imagine spending uh, eternity with Jesus in the most incredible space and place uh, in the ways that God has created you. I, I think that it's beyond our comparison what that new heaven and new earth will be. It's not going to be a dull and boring place. It's going to be that place that fulfills all the deepest longings of our heart for for meaning and, and, and to create and to be in relationship with God and with others. All of those deep longings of our heart have been met and and 1,500 years, 15,000 years in the future, you will look back to this three, six month period and it will be as a blink of an eye because these things are transient. But the things that are unseen are eternal. And when we have our eyes fixed on the fact that we know how the story ends, that there is hope in the midst of any and all circumstances and that hope is secure, then we do not lose heart. Don't lose heart, church.